Welcome to this tutorial on functions in Python. By this time I'm gonna assume that you went through the first steps of Python and you know in particular about loops and conditional statements already. For this tutorial, um, if you're working locally or remotely, please use here the Jupyter Notebook B04 Python, fun like fun and functions which looks like that. In the previous videos and sections, I was sometimes talking about functions already and I was referring to arguments. So let's unpack a little bit what I mean with arguments in functions. So first of all, to define a function, we are gonna need a def keyword. Then we give the function a name. Here I call it my function. And then I provide here the function definition with arguments, optional arguments with one star and optional keyword arguments with two stars. Then my function does something here with the arguments and then it returns something. If you try to run that code block here, it will uh, not work correctly because the function will know what it should do with arguments and there's a good reason why that's not function. It's just an illustration here about what a function looks like. So the function here then is basically just a functional piece that is a first step here towards object orientation of your code. So a function is something that you can use and reuse and reuse again in any code you wrote. So just consider you wrote something great yesterday and then you want to use it in two weeks again for a complete different uh, thing, you can use your function again. A basic example of that could be that you build a great converter of feet to meter in which you wrote down the conversion factor of how you get from uh, feeds to meters and that is then only visible here in that feed to meter function. So this function receives an argument that is called feed. Inside its namespace, so everything that is indented here is basically a namespace, it assign, gets then a new parameter that I call conversion factor. And the conversion factor is 0 0.3048. If you don't believe me, then just use your favorite search engine and look that up. Then I return from that function here the conversion factor multiplied with the input variable that I just called here feed. I could call that, uh, that input argument whatever it is, but feed is very descriptive here because it's a value in feed. Now let's let our kernel know that function. So running that code block here does nothing visible, but now our kernel here knows the functions. To verify if your kernel now knows the functions, just make sure there's a number in here. So process number for the Jupyter notebook. Now let's call that function with an argument. So we define in that code block a variable called feed value. So that's a value in feed here. Now we want to convert that value here to meters. We can either just write here feed to meter and then feed value. So write something like this and then get that conversion. So you can get here then the meter value. So we can do that, but because you don't see it, here I directly implemented that here into um, a print statement where we have again here as the first statement the feed value and then the conversion in meters. So let's run that and this is how it looks like. Makes sense, it's, uh, it's 10 times the conversion factor. If you want to change the conversion factor, you first need to change it here, then rerun that code block and then get here. So if you want to do that, take your time, stop the video and play a little bit. 
I mentioned before that there are also optional arguments. So these optional arguments are characterized with a star. If you call them then arcs or not, it's up to you. But I strongly recommend sticking with this arcs name here because that's commonly used. If you're using optional arguments, that is probably the latest moment where you want to start using doc strings. So doc strings in a function means to using these triple double quotes here that opens the doc string and then you've got here a bunch of lines, or main lines, ever you want to document your code and then you close the doc strings again with triple apostrophes. So here I'm extending now my feed to meter function with optional arguments. So now I want these optional arguments here either to be just a value or also that can be a list. And then I want to convert them and either return them a converted list or a value. What I'm doing here in the doc strings is with these double columns here, so that's this here, I'm defining with text what my function is about or what that parameter is, is it? So here I'm telling that this arcs, these arcs, option arguments should be numeric values in feet. And the output then is a list of values in meters. In the functional, I'm first defining a values list, then I'm using here the conversion factor, and then I am uh, using here the same uh, conversion factors before. And then I'm looping here on the arguments. These optional arguments here are nothing else than a listed or tuple element. So I can just iterate on them as before in the loop and conditional statements tutorial. So in that for loop here, I'm using now again try and accept. <coughs> Why I'm using here accept statements? Well, if one of these elements of the list is not numeric, I do not want the function to crash. I still want it to work. So I'm still allowing here the function to go on. If it encounters a type error, then we'll just print then here that this particular argument or list element is not a number. Otherwise, or in the first step, we will try here to append um, the argument multiplied with the conversion factor. So that operation here fails if the argument is not numeric and then jump into the accept statement. And finally, it returns the value list. So now I will run this code block, which overrides that code block here. It's the same function name, but I'm using something else for it. Nothing will happen. And now let's look how calls to these functions look like. In the first block here, I'm calling the function with three values. So that's this here. So I'm calling the feed to multimeter function with 3, 1, 10. So that should return 3, 1, and 10 multiplied with uh, 0.3048, and that works perfectly well. Now I call the function with no value. Absolutely fine. It will just get here nothing and then assign a value list that is empty and return an empty list. So that's what is here in the print statement. If I call now the function with non-numeric values, so purely non-numeric values, everything is words, it will still return a list because it will two times jump here into the type error. So just is not a, uh, a number and words also not a number. So that's why it prints here just is not a number and words is not a number. And it also tells us here that we got an empty list, which is the empty values list. We can also call in the function here with mixed arguments. That means just words and a two, and then it will return us two meters converted to feet. Uh, two feet converted to meters, that way around. So I invite you now to play a little bit with this feet to meter function that is adapted now for multiple um, arguments, as many as you want to give it. And just pay attention, it will always return a list. Let's make that feed to meter function even more flexible. 
and this flexibilization means that we want to introduce um, the conversion factor as an optional keyword argument. So optional keyword arguments were these things double and designed with this double star sign and then quarks. Again, you do not exactly need to use here quarks. It's these two stars that are uh, important to define the keyword arguments. But I strongly recommend again to stick with this common uh, language definition here of quarks. So how does the function look like now that uses keyword arguments? Well, uh, optional keyword arguments. So first, we have here the optional arguments. And second, we have the optional keyword arguments. It is important to keep exactly this order. We have already seen how the arguments are passed to the function. And that is basically that part here below. That's similar to what we have seen before. The value list is similar to what we have seen before, and the conversion factor is similar to what we have seen before. Now what is new here is that we are looking here into the keyword arguments. So these keyword arguments here, so this double star sign here, defines these keyword arguments as a dictionary. And that is how we can look at the dictionary, uh, at the keyword arguments. So. I added here another loop, for loop here, that iterates on the dictionary items of quarks. If in the key of the current item of the keyword argument, it finds conf, like conversion factor, then it will jump here into that conditional statement and overwrite the conversion factor with the uh, value that we provided for that optional keyword argument. However, if that is not a float number, then it will run, go here into that accept statement and then uh, print that is not a number and we're using here the keyword uh, and, and the default value. So let's run this code block to override the feed to meter function again and have a look at what it does now. So if we want to use, for example, now the very old international food definition from before the 1950s, I think, which was something like 0 0.2 rather than, than uh, 0 0.32 rather than 0 0.3048, something like that, then we can call now the feed to meter functions with the three arguments and then we get here the keyword argument. So the reason why this optional keyword argument is called keyword argument because we're having adding here a keyword. It's important that when you call a function, keywords that you're calling are at the very end of the argument stating. If you would put any keyword before uh, any this keyword specification here before this 3, 1 or 10, it would crash. It needs to define here um, keyword arguments like that. After that, you can still add other argu and keyword argument calls, but they always need the keyword equals a number or a value, something like that. So these are here just options now how we can run now the functions with a conversion factor. And what is important now is the name of, uh, of that um, keyword that we're using. So as long as there's CONV in that keyword name that we're using here, it will use here that, um, that if condition. So that is what defines it here. That is why conf factor works and conversion factor works. Both will jump here into that, uh, now, uh, in, into that loop here that overrides the conversion factor and produces these different outputs of the function. If we would not call it here con factor, not factor but on factor, then we would get here the default value sum. A little bit less flexible, but sometimes more reasonable to use would be a default keyword argument. So instead of using here these conversion factors here, 
with flexible names, we would then need to use here the exact name in the function definition, so conversion factor equals 0 0.3048. Uh, and then we still have the same contents as we had in the second last keyword uh, feed to meter function. We just do not need to define now the conversion factor anymore in the function because we are assigning it here in the default keyword arguments. Now, here my doc strings are missing that conversion factors and I would invite you now to take a break and add that correctly here to the, uh, into the doc strings. Then run this new definition of the feed to meter function and let's call it. So we call it here now with a conversion factor of 0 0.313 and we get it's applied here to the two values that we had before. Otherwise, we can also just run it here without still defining conversion factor because it is not required. It knows it by default. However, if now you would define any other keyword here to, uh, and provide it to the uh, feed to meter function, it would crash because it has no option keyword argument anymore. In Python, functions can be defined with wrappers and decorators, so things that embrace the functions and they can be really useful and I really like them personally. So let's start with an example for when they are useful. We have maybe one function that is multiply arguments and the other one that is some up arguments. Both functions receive optional arguments as a list. They will basically either loop here on the list and multiply every list argument or sum up all the list arguments. However, this functionality cannot work if the one of the elements is not a number or if the value cannot be added. So for that reason, I implemented in both functions try and accept statements. But if you look at these lines here, these four lines, huh, they're basically the same. So I'm doubling here the length of my code for the same, for the, uh, for the same thing. And as soon as in Python you're getting to the point where you're really realizing you're recoding a similar thing, the same thing maybe even, as you did just a little bit ago, then you should start, uh, uh, you, you, you st should start thinking a little bit about restructuring your code and how you can make that thing more efficient and more, um, uh, more conclusive to look at. So instead of using now these try except statements or defining these try except statements twice here, I will now define a wrapper function. And that wrapper function, I call it now verify results, takes a function as arguments. Then the wrapper receives optional arguments, and optional keyword arguments to make it as flexible as possible. Then it has a try statement where it will get a results variable as a function of the function that we provided and then it will print here the result and return the result. Otherwise it will return zero when it's a type error or if it's a value error. So now we can shorten our multiply arguments and sum up arguments function significantly by writing here this, amp, uh, this add verify results function, so wrapping that add verify results function around multiply arguments and some up arguments. And that means now these functions here are passed to the verify result function and we're getting the exact same results but in a much shorter code. And we can now define as many of these types of functions as we want, so for division, 
uh, subtraction, whatever it is, or particular operators even to it, and always using here that same wrapper function that makes the code much more structured and understandable. So let's run here for that code block to get the verify result function, then um, run that code block to get the multiply arguments and some up arguments functions wrapped with the verify result function. And now we can test if that works. So we get here first one call of the arguments, uh, a multiply arguments function. So we call it here with the multiply arguments function with that name. So we're getting this function here with three and four. And we get as a result 12. Uh, three times four is 12. If we call it now with one argument that is not a number, we get here the error and the calculation could not be performed because at least one input is not numeric. And that is now here the result of that type error of, um, print message. So we got here zero. Here the second one here calls now the sum up arguments function basically does the same. So what you see now in the wrapper function before is the returning of a result. So because that wrapper function here returns a result. However, you remember maybe that I was just asking you to define doc strings here or to complete the doc strings of a function. And in order to return also doc strings, so built in things that describe you in terminal, for example, what the function is about, um, you need to replace here the return of a uh, of the result with another function. So we need to keep also consistency of what we return. So if you have here that wrapper function and I return here just now the function, then I will also need to return a function in the case of an error. And for that reason, I'm defining here again another function that is called error func and it also returns 0.0. .0. So it basically returns here um, that uh, same result here of 0.0, .0 .0, but it is a type of a function. So that is important here just to have the consistent returns. So I invite you now to play with that kind of wrapper function and to go maybe a little bit back and um, iterate a little bit on the usage of wrapper functions and how you can take advantage of using them. Maybe just here one hint. What is another typical function where you would use wrapper functions is if you have a software that might be commercial where you need to check out a license. So that could be if you're working with ArcPy, then you can use a wrapper function to check out the license just for that one function that you're using. Special type of function, or it's rather not a function, are iterators and generators. So let's consider here lists, tuples, and dictionary, dictionary data types, and we've seen that those are iterable. So they have an the iter uh, underscore underscore iter underscore underscore built-in method, and this built-in iteration method enables us to write things like this. So we can iterate on a list like this um, in a for loop. However, there are other things that we can do with a list, maybe to flatten it or just think about you've got a nested list and that is a little bit uh, yeah, unpractical for your purpose of data analysis. Then you can use the yield keyword instead of the return keyword for a function. So with that, we are basically writing a generator. So what I'm using here is just um, from the collections.abc uh, package in, in Python, I'm importing the iterable class. I'm using that here in a function oh, that I call flatten. So the flatten function receives a nested list and it iterates here on the nested list. And if, the, um, if it is an in, uh, an iterable instance, then it will go here into this its same function and yield x as a value. 
So if you run that here in a code block where I'm defining a nested list as one, two, three, and then ABC, then I will get an, a flattened list that is just one, two, three, ABC, like this. Sounds fuzzy? Well, take your time, stop the video, and play with that little code block. There's another type of functions that you can use in Python, and those are lambda functions. Lambda functions or lambda calculus is typically used with functional programming languages, and Python is not inherently a functional programming language, but there are functional concepts implemented with the lambda keyword or the map function, filter function, um, and also the reduce function that does not exist anymore, it's deprecated. The advantage of that lambda function is it's very um, quickly and uh, namelessly written. So the lambda function here that we could call just at one here would be lambda, then a number, and it returns a number plus one. So what happens here? Correct, we get the result of two. Um, yeah, as I wrote in the text, that's a pretty useless uh, function example. So let's have a look at something more useful. So let's redefine that sum up function from before. So we need a couple of lines. So instead of using this couple of lines and so on, you can just use here a lambda function that looks like this. Run it and we get the same result. However, that function does not check consistency and is not very flexible um, in terms of arguments. So you need to provide it here with an, uh, with an argument uh, x and y so that it works. The very first example of a p2-meter function can similarly be written as a very simple um, lambda function. So we can convert here a feed value to meters by just using that short lambda function writing. So very basically the same as the very first function, but again, not very flexible. We want to flexibilize that a little bit and use instead, um, again, now a list of values to call the lambda function. You can use a map, um, and the map function. Um, we do not exactly need a lambda function to do so, but um, it's, uh, it would be a practical usage here. So we're using here four feed values that we want to convert. So and then we are using here uh, the map function where we use the feed to meter function. So the map function first receives the name of the function here, lambda function, and then the four feed values to apply to it. So let's just run that and then you see here the result. If you do not need the lambda function at another place in the code, you can also write that here, even though um, that is, fails probably a little bit the idea of defining function at all. There's also the filter function um, where you can just uh, filter essential elements from a list or some iterable argument. However, um, the original author of Python is not a very big fan of these functional keywords of functions in uh, Python and is, that's one of the reasons why the reduce function does not exist anymore. If you want to read more about that, click here on his uh, blog post and read a little bit more about it. If you want to familiarize more with functions, please have a look at the Hydraulics 1D exercise. Thanks for watching this video.